Hello my gorgeous people. I hope you're really well. We've just had Storm Kiara here wreaking its havoc and we've got Storm Dennis coming at the weekend. Um, so I hope you're okay, I hope you're warm and I hope you're safe and today I attended a cremation service for a beautiful young woman who I knew since her birth and who made the devastating decision to take her own life. And so today I'm going to talk about suicide and I'm going to talk about what it means and I'm going to talk about how we might be able to help. So if you are going through anything right now, would you please just wait, watch the video, reach out and just know that however awful this moment is, it will pass. So this is my <clears throat> black Labrador, Nell, who is absolutely wonderful. Um, I'll explain her role more another time, but um, today I just want to talk about um, black dogs, actually. Uh, the other day I was thinking about the impending funeral and didn't want to be in the house alone, so Nell and I headed to a local seaside town where we spent time on the beach. So the black dog that I want to talk to you about today is the black dog of depression and there's a chap called Matthew Johnston who suffered from depression and having spent most of his adult life trying to accept the condition, he learnt to embrace the black dog and as a writer and illustrator he wrote a book which was commissioned by the World Health Organization called The Black Dog and you'll find a link below to the video on YouTube but I think this depicts absolutely fantastically what depression actually feels like. And I think one of the aims of the book was to emphasise the importance of talking to others who might be able to offer support. And I think somehow we have to move to a place where judgment disappears and that we are able to allow people to talk without fear of judgment. Um, and without necessarily thinking, I, I think, that we can do anything about it, because you can't. But actually just to be there on someone's journey can make a huge difference. And in fact, I think it can make the difference between life and death. And so I want to share a little bit with you about my personal history. Because in January of 2019... I made the decision to take my own life and I spent six weeks in a local psychiatric hospital being treated for depression. And after the event, there were many people who said to me, we would never have guessed because I think so many of us are quite phenomenal at putting on a brave face, putting on a mask, putting on a facade of, yes, everything's fine. Um, not wanting to admit the stigma or the disgrace or whatever it is that somebody feels about having uh, a mental health issue. 
Uh, in my own case, a lot of life events had happened in, in fairly short succession. And whilst, you know, many of us would be able to deal with any one of these, it was the fact that they occurred so close together that they just left me reeling. So I guess it started with the death of my youngest brother, which was tragic and unnecessary and so sad and utterly devastating for the people who loved him and a few months after that my cousin was found dead in her flat and just a few months later my husband of 33 years decided that that was a really good time to up and leave. And when he left, I just tried to pretend that everything was normal. I was a teacher and I just got up and I went into school the next day and I just carried on. And and although my marriage had been very difficult, it was a very, very long relationship. I'd married for life and I loved my husband very, very much and was devastated when he left. See, the dog that I had at the time, a beautiful flat coat golden cross called Zeno, was diagnosed with cancer and had to be put to sleep at the vets. And a couple of weeks after that, at Christmas, somebody ran over my beloved cat, driving recklessly outside my house on a road that is supposed to be 30 miles an hour. It's a, it's a country lane, but because it's very long, people think it's okay to speed. And with that, I began to feel utter despair, pointlessness, hopelessness, and a complete lack of joy in anything. Mothering had been by far the most important and significant thing that I had ever done, and when my children left and I was left feeling that I wasn't needed, certainly not needed in the way that I had been needed when they were little, I felt that life had no meaning and no point. And as I've said, I spent six weeks in a psychiatric hospital where I have nothing but the absolute highest respect and admiration for staff who are doing work in the most difficult of circumstances and my own mental health trust is not regarded as particularly good but they are starved of resources at a time when you know mental health of just this country is in is in absolute crisis. I want to talk about a few things that have helped me come out the other side of that particular episode of depression. I am on antidepressants, quite a heavy dose, and I will carry on taking them until I am given the all clear by the psychiatrist. Um, because the alternative is not worth thinking about. And I still suffer depression. I still have days when I contemplate suicide. And I... It takes everything in me to hang on to the belief that life can improve and get better and this is just 
a a point in my life and that this too shall pass and I am so blessed with the most amazing friends anyone could wish for um, some of whom I've known most of my life others have come in at different points but I have friends who are like sisters to me one of the things the psychiatrist said to me when I was in hospital was he talked about my oldest granddaughter because my youngest hadn't been born at that point and he said that he'd picked up that I obviously thought a lot about this little girl and I said yes I do I adore her she's wonderful and he said to me well I presume that you know that um if somebody has a suicide in the family, they're far more, far more likely to consider suicide themselves. And the legacy that I would be leaving if I chose to take my own life would be to inflict on my family a legacy of the idea that suicide is, is the way out. And I am not for one minute criticising anyone who makes the decision to take their own life. I wouldn't do that. I've heard people describe them as cowards. I've heard people describe them as very brave. All I know is that people can get into a space where at that moment in time, nothing else seems to make any sense. And it is just about trying to hold on long enough for that bloody awful moment to pass. And I personally have coped by spending time with the people that I love so much, my friends, my family, my animals. Spending time in nature, practicing mindfulness and meditation, and something that has really helped me is uh, journaling. I've also had some therapy, which again was incredibly helpful. So, if you are in crisis right now, I would like to ask you from the bottom of my heart just to stop a minute and know that you are loved and that there will be somebody there that is prepared to listen without judgment and if you can't think of anybody in your immediate circle then please get a referral to the Mental Health Trust fire your GP or ring the Samaritans but reach out because this moment when you're in that black, black place that hole that feels like it'll never end will end hold on to that idea that this too will pass and however black this moment seems it will go, it will shift. And the devastation that you leave behind for the people you love is not worth it. So hang on in there and know that you are loved and ask for help.